This meeting is called to order. There you go. Madam Clerk. <laughs> Acting this? City Attorney Hockaluck. Here. Acting City Manager Doctor. <clears throat> Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Commissioner Reed. Here. Commissioner Shirtliff. Here. Mayor Collins. Here. And for the record, Mayor Collins, Commissioner Dean will be joining us online a few minutes late. You bet. Welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission meeting. We are pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome your public we welcome your public commentary during the meeting. Please read the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge Our commission minutes from August 21st and August 26th were received. Commissioners, do we have any corrections, anything? The minutes will stand as submitted. <clears throat> Presentation. Approved confirmation of officers Darren Shavers and officer Joshua Graham. Chief Petty, you have the floor. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. All right. Tonight I have two officers that have successfully completed their year probationary period with the Helena Police Department. At the end of the probationary period and under Montana state law, the appointment of the officers must be submitted to the city commission. And if that appointment is confirmed by the city commission, then they'll officially become a member of our police force. With this said, I'm seeking approval from the commission to confirm these officers tonight. Uh, prior to having these officers confirmed and if I may I'd like to introduce them and provide a brief background please thank you mayor my first officer is officer Darren Chavers he grew up just outside of Denver Colorado officer Chavers made it to Helena by way of attending Carroll College at Carroll he played soccer and majored in psychology and sociology while attending Carroll officer Chavers also worked at the Helena pre-release center after graduating Carroll College, Officer Chavers married his high school sweetheart, Cody, and they decided to stay in Helena area. Officer Chavers has always wanted to become a police officer and was fortunate enough to get a job with the Helena Police Department. I didn't write that, Officer Chavers did. <laughs> he is grateful for the opportunity with HPD and being able to serve a community he cares for. <clears throat> My next officer is Officer Joshua Graham. He was born and raised in Georgia. After high school, Officer Graham joined the United States Army, <clears throat> Army as an indirect fire infantryman. Officer Graham was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 24th Infantry Regiment, and spent three years in Alaska in an Arctic Warfare Unit. During that time, he married his wife, Madison. In 2017, they moved to Vislek, Germany, probably mispronounced, where he spent time as a mortar squad leader and section sergeant with 2nd Squadron, 2nd Cavalry Regiment. I think I wrote a little less, okay. In 2020, Officer Graham was honorably discharged from active duty status and joined the Montana Army National Guard where he currently serves as a mortar platoon section, section sergeant. Officer Graham deployed in 2022 in support of Operation Spartan Shield and Operation Inherent Resolve. Joshua spent the bulk of his deployment in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia where he conducted numerous operations and assisted in building a new base. Upon returning to Montana, Officer Graham had the desire to serve this wonderful community he was living in and began pursuing a career in law enforcement. He is also grateful to the Helena Police Department for giving him this opportunity to serve such a great community. And with that, I'd like to welcome officers Darren Chavers and Joshua Graham, along with their respective families to the HPD family. With the introduction of those officers, and as we've done in the past, if you don't mind having them 
say a few words and thank the commission and introduce any guests that they may have. Please. Okay. Mayor, uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank my wife, Madison. She's uh, supported me through a lot, and uh, I really appreciate her uh, her strength and everything to help me pursue this career. Um, and I want to thank Chief Petty for uh, giving me this opportunity as well. And I look forward to serving this great community. Thank you. Thank you. To piggyback off what Officer Graham said, I'm very thankful to be here. Thank you for everybody, for the commission, for, for having us here today, especially you, Mayor, and then the Helena Police Department and Chief Petty for um, uh, allowing me to, to be an officer for this great community. It's been a, a great year. I'm very thankful to be here and uh, continue to serve this community. Thank you. <clears throat> With that said, Mayor, uh, we are seeking approval for the confirmation of these two fine officers. Thank you, Chief. Commissioners. Mr. Mayor, would you like a motion or would you like commentary? Please. Mr. Oh. Mayor, I move to approve the confirmation of Officer Darren Chavers and Officer Joshua Graham. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Commissioner. <clears throat> Officers, thank you very much for um, choosing Helena to serve. Um, we found in the last number of years the difficulty in, in recruitment of officers and, and so the fact that you've chosen Helena is a, is a big deal for us. Um, you guys, I'm sure, don't know this, but, uh, well, actually, you know this part. <laughs> what an important part of the community you are. You, um, you will get to know the community better than most of, the, of us who live here by just doing your jobs daily and, and knowing her people. Um, I, this part you don't know. I used to serve in the fire department and, and uh, did 20 years there. And one of the things that always <coughs> surprised me after I retired was driving around town and I would think about various calls that stops that I made in Helena and, um, it sticks with you both the good and the bad. And, and, uh, you have a, a wonderful opportunity to do a lot of good, and and I just appreciate um, your presence and your choice here in Helena. So thank you. Thank Please. you, Mr. Mayor. I, I don't think I have much to add other than thank you. We appreciate your service, and we look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, officers, welcome to Helena's Finest. Uh, it's good to have you on board. Thank you for your willingness and your family's willingness to uh, participate and protect and serve our community. Thank you very much. Officers, we want to send out our appreciation for you going through the process. We know it hadn't been easy. We know what it is. You're still going through the process, but we know you're in a very decent community and we want you to keep it, keep doing what you're doing because we, uh, you're working with a fine group of officers and uh, <clears throat> we appreciate you being here. Thank you. It's been moved, seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtliff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to one. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Thank you, Mayor. You bet. Board appointments. I'm recommending the following board appointments. The ADA Compliance Committee, reappointment of Deborah Lane to the ADA Compliance Committee as the business owner representative. First full term expires September 1st, 2027. I'm also recommending City County Airport Authority Appointment of Kendra Liphart to the City County Airport Authority as a city appointee. First term expires September 1st, 2027. 
Board of Adjustment, reappointment of Tracy Engline. She, if it's wrong, blame the um, clerk. She told us to the Board of Adjustment, second term expires August 31st, 2027. Reappointment of Tim Tholt to the Board of Adjustment. The first full term expires September 30th, 2027. City County Planning Board. Appointment of Austin Kit Anderson to the City County Planning Board as a city appointee. First term expires September 1st, 2027. Commissioners. Any comments? Do you have any public comments on this? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I, move to, I move to for the approval of a reappointment of Deborah Lane to the ADA Compliance Committee as a business owner and representative. First full term expires September 1st, 2027 into the appointment of Kendra Leinart to the City County Airport Authority as a city appointee. First term expires September 1st, 2027 to the reappointment of Tracy Ageline to the Board of Adjustment, second term, which will expire August 31st, 2027, and the reappointment of Tim Tholt to the Board of Adjustment. The first full term expires September 30th, 2027. And finally, the appointment of Austin Kid Anderson to the City County Planning Board as a city appointee, first term, expires September 1st, 2027. Second. It's been moved and seconded. And final discussion. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtliff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. <coughs> Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. Commissioners, proposals from you. What say you? Nothing, okay. Report of the city attorney, Attorney Hockelot, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. I have nothing to report tonight. Thank you. Report of the city, acting city manager. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. I have nothing to report tonight either. Communications from Helena Citizens Council, Representative Anna Kratz. Hello. Uh, the Helena Citizens Council is having our open house on September 25th. That's a Wednesday from 4.30 to 6.30 at the Civic Center. And we look forward, forward to gathering community input and we have no official stance on the proposed sign regulation. Comments or questions from Ms. Kratz? Thank you. <clears throat> Regular items, consider exclusive row use permit serenity apartments. Director Kinopke, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. One second while I bring up the map. Today, is it in that folder? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. This, uh, this request is for a considered exclusive use permit for by the Serenity Apartments. Um, they are an apartment complex down by Super One. Uh, the clerk is going to pull up our map here momentarily. So although they did comply with our um, requirements for parking, they actually added an additional um, parking spaces um, because of the, uh, the need for parking in these, in these um, types of developments. There is no on-street parking in that area. All the surrounding streets are signed no parking. And <clears throat> so that is why they're requesting this. There's a piece of unused um, city right-of-way, um, for the most part unused. We do have sewer lines and some storm drain facilities that run through there but they're requesting use of this area. 
as an exclusive use so that their um, apartment uh, renters can use this as kind of an overflow parking. Uh, as with any <coughs> exclusive right-of-way use, there um, <coughs> comes fees um, associated with it, which is in the realm of 5% of the fair market value and of the adjacent property. In this case, that amounts to approximately $2,678. Um, there's this parking lot will be designed to our engineering standards and city code, so that uh, we'll have access to our sewer mains there in case the, they need to be maintained. And they'll be, uh, so if, if they do, that access would be basically, if it was an emergency, immediate. So that um, area would be coned off and, and whatever maintenance needed to be done. And then um, they would get the maintenance done and then turn it over to the apartments again once that maintenance work is done. As I said before, the, the parking lot will be designed to meet our city code and engineering standards, which will include um, you know, amenities like storm drain sidewalks um, and among others. So this would um, provide on-street parking, hopefully re mitigate and reduce future conflicts with adjacent property owners. There's a residential directly to the west. Um, Super One is kind of to the, is also to the west. Uh, a motel to the south and a collision repair shop uh, to the east. Um, at this time, the staff recommends approve, move to approve the Serenity Park Apartments exclusive right of way use permit of 7,070 square feet for an annual fee of $2,678.39 with a condition that the city may access and maintain public utilities in, a per in the permitted right of way, whichever is whenever necessary. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Director. Comments from the Commission? Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a little hard to tell from this picture, and I did not have time to go down there. What's there now? Uh, it's basically vacant land as it is now. It's access, it serves access for the uh, lift station that's to the north and also access to the sewer mains that are, are there right now. And the access to the lift station will not be impeded or obstructed by this? No, if, if, if access is needed, that um, will be worked out with the, the plans. Okay, and then if, if I, one mm -hmm. other question. Um, I noted in the packet that it is currently, the plan is to have a gravel parking lot and in the future it may be paved. Do we have any timelines on that and any concerns about that? Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, the reason for the um, gravel parking lot is any maintenance that would have to be done uh, on those sewer lines would then be subject to um, digging into that asphalt. And because this is a uh, right of way use agreement, the condition would be that they um, have to return that. I mean, the utilities department would not just leave an open hole, obviously they would backfill it, but any additional features that weren't basically there to begin with would have to be returned by the property owner. And so in this case, we worked it out that um, it would be a gravel parking lot, and if the need arose in the future for a paved parking lot, the city and the property owner would work that out. Any others? Do we have any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk, any online? Mr. Mayor, I have no public comment online. Thank you, Director. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. I move to approve the Serenity Apartments exclusive right of way use permit of 7,070 square feet for an annual rate of $2,678.39 with the condition that the city may access and maintain public utilities in the permitted right of way whenever necessary. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtleff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Uh, Commissioner Dean has joined us officially online for the record. I'd also like to correct the record from earlier. Uh, I'm in Dutch with the chief of police. 
I mistakenly called the roll call on uh, the confirmation of officers four to one. For the record, it was four to zero. You got it. Consider acceptance of the in-kind donation from American Legion Baseball Organization for Improvement to Kindred Legion Field. Superintendent Marr, you have the floor. Mayor Collins, commissioners, uh, this item tonight is consider the acceptance of in-kind donation from American Legion Baseball Organization for Improvements to Kindred Legion Field. Um, the uh, American Legion Baseball successfully installed uh, artificial turf um, completed the project and it enhances the uh, playability of Kendrick Field. And um, it was uh, the initiative was fully funded by American Legion Baseball to the tune of two hundred and fifty thousand wow. dollars. And another bonus when they when they redid the artificial turf, they also improved the drainage of the field, which has helped uh, keep water out of the dugouts and just uh, yeah. it'll end up saving park maintenance in, in the long run. Um, the staff recommendation is to uh, move to accept the in-kind donation of $250,000 of field improvements at Kendrick Legion Field. Thank you, Superintendent Marr. If anybody has any questions, I'll answer. Commissioners? Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Another uh, question, just again, we really appreciated the presentation last week at the administrative meeting. The project looks fantastic. This is a great investment in our community, and I'm super grateful for both our staff and um, the Baseball, I'm going to get the name wrong, sorry. American the Legion. Kendrick Legion yeah. people for their investment <laughs> in our community. Thank you. Yeah, and this will be our first park that has artificial turf in the, the city park system. So that's a, a big You intend plus. having more? What's that? You intend having more? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for bringing this to us. Uh, as someone who grew up playing baseball, I'm really excited for this investment in this partnership with our friends on the other side of town with the American Legion Field. It's got a great view, well, despite the smoke today, but it's now one of the best fields in the whole state. And looking yeah. forward to hosting more tournaments and having more people come to Helena. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk, any online? Mr. Mayor, I have no public comment online. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I would move to accept the in-kind donation of $250,000 of field improvements at Kendrick Legion Field. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtliff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Thanks to the American Legion. <clears throat> Consider final passage of an ordinance revising the regulations of signs by amending chapter 23, title 11 of the Helena City Code by repealing and replacing chapter 23, general signs regulations in its entirety and adopting this new chapter 23 sign regulation in lieu of. Uh, see, uh, Plano Alvarez, you're taking over. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Uh, <clears throat> as introduced, I am Michael Alvarez, a planner with the Community Development Department, and my item tonight is a new chapter 23 of Title 11 concerning the regulation of signs. Uh, this item was heard in a public hearing on August 12th. Uh, that hearing was closed and the vote was tabled to provide time for further consideration on elements of the proposed ordinance. The meeting packet was unchanged from the public hearing, including the omission of the ordinance. Uh, it is available here in commission chambers or online under the July 15th city commission meeting materials under file sign update 2023-053124. So uh, there were three issues brought up with the proposed sign ordinance uh, to be more fully explored prior to taking it back to a vote before the mayor and commission, two of which, 11236H and J, have to deal with electronic message centers, and the third more generally with the cap and replace program for billboards. So 11236H 
states any electronic message center that is located within 300 feet of any residential use must automatically turn off between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. daily unless the business is operating during these hours. Zoning Commission uh, with staff endorsement uh, recommended change to that motion language to change the proposed code to read within 300 feet of any residential district instead of use. Um, so, uh, to dive into 1123-6H, keeping lights on after business hours. Um, early on in the process of crafting this sign code, we took comment from a resident in South Hills who asked us to strongly consider dark skies and light pollution in our ordinance, and early drafts and conversations considered a wide range of possible solutions, including things like regulating the color temperature of signs onto brightness requirements for cabinet signs, and ultimately, those conversations um, uh, for the electronic message centers led to two different sections, 1123.6D and 1123.6H, uh, tied to turning off signs after business hours. And effectively, they state that in residential zones, signs must turn off their illumination after the business closes. In all other dis districts, uh, businesses must turn off their electronic message centers after they close and if it's between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. and this should also read and within 300 feet of a residential district. So uh, more generally requiring signs to have their lights turned on after business hours was not ultimately recommended since that hasn't been the practice in Helena or other Montanan cities, although it is not an uncommon regulation nationally. Um, so staff was asked for um, options regarding um, uh, the language here. Um, uh, this slide has a summary of it and the specific language will be on the next slide. Uh, option one here is keep H as recommended, um, as recommended by the Zoning Commission here. Um, Option two is to match update the current language for electronic message centers. Uh, this was recommended by Earl Charles, who we have uh, of Branded Solutions, who we have in attendance here by written comment and verbally in the public hearing. Uh, option three come, came from James Carpentier of the Northwest Sign Council. Um, he was uh, speaking as a representative to the local uh, or as a um, industry expert. Um, and speaking on behalf of many of the sign companies here, and that is to scratch section H entirely. Uh, and option four, which would be to adopt a requirement for all signs to be turned off uh, after business hours. Uh, and this option would most strongly align with the Dark Skies Initiative, and this would scrap section H and modify section D. So uh, up on your screen, and I also provided this slide specifically as a, as a handout to the mayor and commission. Um, uh, has the different options um, written out. Um, uh, option one is the recommended language um, as first presented to the commission as a regular item and again in the public hearing. Uh, option two, um, this is designed to match the current language in the code and states no on-premise electronic message center shall be erected or maintained closer than 100 feet from any resident residential district unless the sign is constructed in such a manner that the sign cannot be seen from said district. Uh, option three, uh, this one uh, just being to strike it, um, and option four would read, on-premise sign illumination must be turned off when the business is closed. Uh, uh, that would modify D and uh, would also strike uh, subsection H. Um, So on to 1123.6J, um, this refers to uh, animation on signs. Uh, it reads, no portion of any sign may change its message or background in a manner or by a method of display characterized by motion or animation, including the presentation of pictorials or graphics displayed in a progression of frames that give the illusion of motion or the illusion of mo moving objects, moving patterns, bands of light, or expanding or contra contracting shapes, except as provided by 1123.6G. Uh, options here, uh, this simply refers to whether or not the electronic message centers um, can have animation, so it's either to keep it as proposed, um, eliminating animation, 
which would be the um, fairly typical in the uh, for cities in the state of Montana, um, or to strike it um, and allow for animations. 112311. Um, so um, I have the purpose and intent up here, and uh, for the billboards, originally when this was brought forth, we talked about sunsetting billboards, and that would be having this billboards be taken down that are around town. Uh, ultimately, we didn't um, uh, pursue that path. Um, a second alternative would to be to ban um, uh, permitting new um, billboards to be erected around town. That wasn't desirable between city staff, zoning commission um, either. Uh, it would um, prohibit signs from being updated, maintained, um, um, it, and um, uh, would unfairly harm the business community. Um, we wrote this intent statement to make sure that, uh, we acknowledge that there is economic value that in the advertising and having the, these things up. We also, however, want to recognize um, uh, that there are negative effects to these boards and to um, stop the proliferation of them. So it's cap and replace. Uh, to cap um, them uh, would be to um, permit the current signage, the current billboards that are up as um, legal conforming. Um, and so, um, the idea there is to permit them, um, and we decided to permit, or our option here is to permit them in the same way that we permit other businesses and locations that earn money around town. Um, it would be through a billboard business permit, which would be based off the city's business licensing program. Um, their annual renewal would be consistent with the business licensing requirements in the city. Uh, the annual permit program would be the f a first for Montana, um, but these types of programs do exist elsewhere in the nation. Uh, a cap and replace program would recognize the economic value of the investment, but provide a mechanism for staff to evaluate yearly conformance of current boards with city code, and the removal of or phasing out of billboards in the city is in line with our growth policy and public comment and discussion as part of the planning process. And this is the end of the presentation. I'm available for your questions. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Thank you, Planner Avars. Commissioners, any comments or questions? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. So a question on 1123.11, um, I guess specifically <clears throat> Section C, which is the billboard business permit. We heard, I think, at the last meeting a, a little, and we received feedback of objection to this um, this particular section. At our administrative meeting, I think Commissioner Reed had asked about the intent, what essentially what's going on here, and and uh, Commissioner Brink or Director Brink uh, explained to us the the idea that it would give an opportunity to get eyes on existing billboards for compliance and things like that. <clears throat> is there anything that prevents that from happening without this section? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commission. Um, basically, it costs money to get a planner um, out on the street and um, going out to all of these locations, there's the opportunity cost, there's just the cost of, of them doing other work, and there's just the cost of having that person out and, and um, performing this work. Um, we recently have updated other fee structures where we're trying to split the cost of um, the work that we perform um, with the people who are, um, getting that benefit um, and um, that's basically the function that we're going to look for. Um, this program is going to cost the city money to, to run. Um, it's going to cost uh, that money primarily in staff time and um, 
we would be trying to recoup some of that cost. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll have further question and comment as the night goes on. Please go ahead, Commissioner. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a, a follow-up from Commissioner Logan's question. I understand the part about staff time and the cost, but is it possible to achieve the same goal of taking an inventory and sort of, you know, being aware of the stock of what we have through some sort of registration without the fee part? Is that, would it be possible to do the same, achieve the same thing without charging an annual fee and everyone each year would simply register their billboards? Is that an option that was considered? Um, thank you, uh, Mayor and Commissioner. Um, Yes, that option was considered. Uh, you know, when we um, create these billboard permits and cap the total number of them, we are going to be creating a market for these. Um, and um, it is the opinion of city staff that this is going to be a a a. a and a program that is going to incur a decent amount of cost on, on our department. Um, uh, and so we are seeking to, to recoup some of that, um, some of that money uh, in line with our other uh, fee structures uh, this year. Mr. Mayor, uh, follow up to Commissioner Please. Reed's question. So, um, So you have, a, you, you have an existing in inventory of billboards in Helena. Is that accurate? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commission. We largely do. Um, we, don't we don't have it pulled together in, in a single location. Um, generally, we can easily track down billboards through electrical permits. Um, if they've had an electrical permit, then they've been assigned an address. Um, some older billboards that don't have lights on them may not have their own unique address, um, which is something that would need to be created. Um, uh, also, if there's multiple boards at a location, um, it would need to be, we would need to figure out the, the separate address points for them because they might be under a single electrical permit. So no, we don't actually currently keep a list um, specifically of available billboards in town. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Plan Avers. But don't leave. Mr. Mayor. I believe Commissioner Dean has her hand raised oh, online. That's why I took Come back to the seat. You're in the hot seat there, planner. <laughs> Commissioner Dane, you have the floor. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Apologies for being late. I am in D.C. for work. Um, planner Alvarez, I was wondering, within this um, piece of the proposed ordinance, if a fee structure doesn't exist, it would essentially make the cap and replace program obsolete. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, the, the, uh, thank you, Mayor and Commission. Yeah, the, the permit renewal is an, is an important um, part of uh, them maintaining conformance, um, and it's the device that we use um, to regulate and sweep up um, uh, unwanted uh, billboards that are uh, no longer in use um, or, or desired and have been abandoned. So yeah, uh, it would be typical to, to have a permit that costs some amount of money um, so that there is a, a renewal process going on. Okay, thank you. And then Mr. Mayor, just one additional question. Um, can you talk a little bit about the um, process that the Zoning Commission went through the last 18 months to get to this point? I think that, you know, with the last, the admin meeting and the meeting prior, um, there was a lot of discussion around, um, you know, how we got to this point. Um, and I think we understand that there's quite a bit of compromise that happened. So can you talk a little bit about, um, what the zoning commission's work included in the last 18 months? Uh, thank you, mayor and commission. Um, 
Yeah, so it, it's been a long process with a lot of uh, public comment. Um, a lot of opportunities have been given to, to meet with um, professionals uh, and hear from professionals in the uh, sign industry. Um, there was a push and pull um, to figure out um, in, in a big way, uh, lighting of signs um, is, has been a huge component and we're um, really excited to be introducing um, uh, the point three, the foot candle um, regulations uh, for signs. Uh, I think that's going to have a huge impact um, on the community, just um, bringing down that glare of those signs. Um, and um, more generally, um, uh, trying to reduce some of the regulations and loopholes that uh, the sign companies are kind are are frequently having to jump through, especially with wall signage, um, uh, while also um, trying to recognize the the value um, in um, a a a peaceful and and quiet night where we can observe uh, the night sky in a beautiful Montana. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. So is there opportunity, so, so let's say this section didn't exist, <clears throat> wasn't part of the discussion, but there is a permitting section of the ordinance and fees associated with it, with that initial permit application. Is there opportunity for cost recovery for this program in the initial application? Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Uh, there, so if we were to impose a one-time uh, fee for or a billboard business permit at the time of getting the sign permit, and the sign permits, when people refer to them, that is a building permit. That is, um, uh, goes to the building division. That is to ensure the, the safety um, and um, the inspection of a safe sign and that uh, engineering standards are followed. Uh, a one-time fee um, would discourage people from, uh, would discourage the sign companies from updating their signs. We'd basically be um, uh, dissuading them with a, a government fee from, say, updating from an old four-pole four telephone sign to a monopole, which, the, which is, uh, are currently required and and what and is desirable. Um, so, the zoning commission uh, and city staff were were sensitive to that. Um, we want these companies to be able to operate um, uh, signs. We want them to be able to keep their technology up to date. Um, we want to keep these things viable. Um, we just don't want more of them. Uh, and so um, this business permit, um, by being a small annual fee, doesn't have the effect of dissuading them from updating their signs. If we weren't doing the billboard business permit program, uh, if it was a one-time fee or if um, or, or we just weren't doing it like you asked, um, we would be up here just recommending a moratorium um, just a flat moratorium on new billboards in town um, and just having these be um, legal non-conforming. Mr. Mayor, just a final comment on this section. Thank you. Um, I, I'm just struggling with this. We've heard a fair bit of feedback from the sign community, particularly the billboard uh, sign community about what essentially is adding kind of a layer of bureaucracy to um, they're the process and, and um, maybe I'll hear something in public comment that will um, dissuade me from my current view of it but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Planner Alvarez. Uh, what do we do for the, for the folks here and the folks watching at home? What do we currently do for billboards in terms of permitting? for the businesses that own them. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Uh, so the, in order to put up a new sign in the city, you need to get a sign permit. That is a building permit um, 
the permit application for that is um, specifically tailored to a sign, uh, and then the fee structure is based off the total cost of the sign. That goes to the building department. Um, they are, uh, that, that division, I'm sorry, the building division, um, and that division is funded through fees and not out of the general fund um, for their, they, they would do inspections um, uh, then at the time of it being built. One comment and a question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, with regards to that, if to that permitting process that we do have now, um, if you'd mentioned earlier just a few moments ago about updating signs, signs keeping them up to date and in good maintenance and in good care, couldn't we just make that a criteria of the existing permitting process? Just requiring that as an addition instead of creating a market Is that possible? Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Um, it is somewhat difficult to do certain maintenance requirements through zoning. Uh, zoning needs to be separate from um, uh, the building code. So if we saw something structurally deficient, um, that's something that would be handled through the, the building code um, and there, we can't use zoning to, to um, we can't use zoning in that way. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Planner Alvarez. Um, if I understood correctly, we do not currently have an inventory. What is your estimation, assuming you know, we decide to go with the permits. What is your estimation of how long it would take to get a full inventory of billboards in Helena to begin the sort of cap and release phase? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commission. So it's easy enough to get the list from Yesco and Lamar, um, and that's gonna be 90% of the billboards in town. Um, it's, um, then we would, cross-reference it um, with electrical permits to try to find uh, some of the other electrified ones. It's really finding those locations um, that might be a little bit older on a smaller, more independent operator that, um, um, and that aren't electrified, that are just older. Um, uh, that could take some time, and then, um, so that's that's the field work side of it, um, and we would be using a device to geolocate those, um, and we've already had some conversation with GIS about how to do that. Um, and then uh, the flip side of that would be um, in our software system, um, making sure that we have, since it's address point based, um, making sure that we can separate the billboard faces for the number of address points that we need and, and building that capacity into the system. Uh, EPNL is um, well suited for this task, but that would take um, some amount of staff time to do that. Um, uh, I would say um, with our other workloads, probably uh, a month or two to get us up and running once we uh, have a handle on, on all the tasks that are, that are at hand for, for what we're, we need to do. Um, part of the reason uh, uh, we left a lead time in here that the first time that they would need to get these permits is uh, January 30th of 2026, um, basically so that we can um, better address um, uh, do some trial runs and, and, and make sure that we've got a great handle on everything um, and we have an easy permitting process by the time we roll it out. Just a quick follow-up if I might. And if during the sort of inventory phase you come across a billboard that is non-conforming, what is the, how would that be handled? Um, so we have language uh, So there are non-conforming billboards that are legal non-conforming. So, um, um, excuse me. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. But uh, so could you, do you mean uh, conforming and also not legally permitted or? I mean, uh, thank you, Planner Alvarez. If, if during the inventory phase you come across a billboard that does not meet our 
compliance standards in some way, shape, or form and, and shouldn't be up. It is no longer safe. It is, you know, structurally unsound. What is What does the process look like at that point? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commission. So there is, that language is built into this uh, new code for um, the series of letters and takedown notices. If it's uh, structurally unsound to the point where it's a, a danger to the, to the public, we can move quite quickly against it. Um, if uh, it's a matter that it wasn't, say, permitted in the, the first place or something like that, um, uh, we would take action as a as a zoning violation. Um, there are signs that are up and got sign permits that are uh, not conforming um, all around town, and they would be uh, brought in as legal non-conforming. And when they um, got their permit from us, they would be. Uh, labeled as con conforming in that location as a as a permitted sign so um, uh, they would then be able to um, take that sign down move it rebuild it as they as they needed to they would be granted that that permit um, so the, it, it, there's an it, there there is sort of a win there for the the billboards and the as opposed to just being um, legal non-conforming and and they wouldn't they would have they would eventually not be able to replace that sign currently or keep it up to date thank you and i just i want to say this has been a challenging section for me and i have greatly appreciated the amount of time you spent clarifying it for me and providing additional uh, information in the comparison um, that has been super useful for me so i appreciate it thank you thank you mayor and commission any others <clears throat> Do we have any public comments on this topic? Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commission. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Strobel. I'm from Lamar Outdoor Advertising. And again, as Michael and staff, uh, we've, over the last 18 months, we've been this is not an easy task in regards to rule changes, changing rules um, with this. Um, again, and as a, you could probably just hit repeat on a lot of this stuff that we are definitely against, the, especially the C, the, the permitting fees. A couple things, you know, just to re, the, the non-conforming, throughout the city, there's a couple of non-conforming. There's non-conforming with the city. There's also non-conforming with the MDOT. Anything that's on system that the MDOT regulates, there's two different types of people we gotta go through. We gotta go through the local municipalities, which is the city, as well as the MDOT to get things changed. Again, as I've reiterated in the past, I don't know how much money this is gonna accumulate. Maybe let's just, I'm using a, number, a goofy number, maybe $10,000. Is $10,000 gonna make that big of an impact to what I guess the general fund is where this is all going. But if it's going into the general fund, what all, who all gets to spend money out of the general fund? And what are we paying for? Are we getting a permit for each one of these locations? We're good with the moratorium. If this section C in the off-premise side is the only section that is holding everything up to be passed, I think we can dot I's and cross T's later eliminate this altogether and, and pass the updated regulations. We're okay with the moratorium, and, and that's where we deal with this in every municipality. Um, there's a cap and replacement. If we remove one, we get a sign credit. A sign credit then is able to be used in a legal conforming location throughout the city. I think that by increasing fees, I think you could probably have a permitting fee and then a permit, you know, different fees as far as when you apply for a permit. We've already paid for all of these permits, and there's only, as Michael said, and it's and nothing, I mean, Michael's doing a great job and he's been awesome to work with. Um, it's, it, it, it's, I think that for us to come to, the, let's just, for example, we've got a mono, we've got two, uh, uh, two wood pole sign, we want to increase it. If I fill out a city permit, 
that is now a new permit. So I can, re, you know, charge me for the fees for a new a new sign, which is, has to be a conforming location. I can't just rebuild it into a non-conforming location. Um, there are some situations to where um, we may not be able to build it. Maybe it's just something that we have to take down because we can't. We don't want to, especially with a cap and replacement. But as things grow, city grows, it, you, um, annexations get brought in. Um, but again, I think that if it would be cleaner, it would be less headache if the C section C and 1123 11 just gets eliminated altogether. And then if it needs to come back into play, then um, address it at a later date. Thank you, sir. Any questions? I guess probably not. No. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any others? And I just want to remind you, your come issue, when you hear the buzzer, means you're about to, you're supposed to start wrapping up. So. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Brett Winch. I own 1889 Coffee House, and I just found out about this recently. I apologize. I didn't know more about it. I'm a small business owner. I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of things except for run my business and try to do as much as I can for the community. But taking down and manipulating what I can do and I can't do with my digital sign is very disheartening to me. I do a lot of support to the community. I advertise and market for the community, for community events. And by shutting down my sign at 7 o'clock at night when I close my coffee house until 5 o'clock in the morning, I lose a lot of support to the community. I lose support for marketing and advertising within my own business. I went out and asked every single house on the backside of my business if my sign or my lights bothered them. And every single one of them said, no, we appreciate the lights you put in. The sign we don't even realize is on, but we appreciate the light because of a lot of the problems that are going on in Helena with, you know, random people walking around in bad places and bad things happen when it's dark. The city required me when I built my business to put these stupid spotlights out in front of my store to add more lighting. I would have rather taken those out and I will be happy to do that if I had to, but to tell me I can't run my sign that I had to spend $25,000 to put up and I can't market on that now is hard for me, okay? Um, the danger that it could create by darkening up these things. I've lived in Montana all my life except for when I served in the military. And I'll tell you right now, our skies are beautiful at night. When I drive down the hill coming into Helena, I feel that it's a, not as bright as other towns that I drive into, such as Great Falls if you go into that town. So I understand that there might be some ways that we can save on lighting and some ways that we can turn down some lights. For example, I have a sensor on my store. So they come on when it gets dark, they shut off when it gets bright. Pretty simple, but overall, I'm just telling you, this will hurt my business. It's not fair to the small business owners, and it's not fair that people that just put little letters up on their signs will be able to advertise all day long, and I can't. So, thank you, guys. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners, for listening. Thank you. Do we have any others? Good evening, Good Honorable evening. Mayor, uh, Commissioners. My name is Bob Alvarez. I'm here representing Yes Go Outdoor Media. Um, we're also a proud uh, business operator in the city of Helena uh, and have been for a number of years. Um, Yesco's position on the outdoor regulations is that we adopt the recommended sign ordinance, however, uh, omit 1123-11C, which is the uh, the, the fee structure that, that's being discussed this evening. Um, co costs are cost, and, and as indicated earlier, I know that we've in good faith already paid permits uh, when we originally engaged at those locations. Um, the, the overarching concern that we're seeing right now is that this isn't done anywhere in the state of Montana by any agency, by any county nor is it done by any other uh, state anywhere in the vicinity of Montana. And what the concern we have is this is going to set a precedence that could essentially be detrimental to our industry. Um, I, I assure you that the, the money that I've spent, and, and, and gratefully so, or my company has in travel, 
you know, eight hour round trips coming down for these meetings, hotel, fuel, lodging, all that stuff, probably far supersedes the cost that we're, we're talking here. But if this program gets implemented, uh, this could create a, a trickle down effect where every other agency out there jumps on this bandwagon. And that is extremely concerning to us. Uh, again, it's not seen out there. Um, this process has been a lengthy one, but one that we're extremely grateful to be part of. Um, Representative Alvarez and the commissioners were absolutely fantastic to work with. It was definitely a give and take by all parties. We're, we don't love everything in here, but we're, we're happy with what's in here. So again, we recommend uh, to move forward, uh, but however, admitting 1123, 11C. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I'm first going to ask you, if you would, to just give me a little latitude on time. Uh, I don't want to be a time hog, but I do think it's important that I cover a few things. First thing, and uh, I, this is really difficult for me, but I need to give a little bit of my background. Uh, I've been in the sign industry for 47 years, ever since I got out of the Army. I was the uh, chair, uh, president of the board of the United States Sign Council, a nationwide organization whose focus was research for the industry. Most of that research, uh, in fact, 99% of that research was all independent. We hired places like Penn State and places like that to actually do these independent studies. So I do know what the studies are all about. In fact, uh, my final year as the president of the board was the year that we took it from a, a national organization of doing sign uh, conferences and all of that to strictly being a research foundation, which is all they do now is research for the sign industry. Having said that, uh, I would like to tell you that I stand opposed to a couple of things you've already heard about in the uh, sign code specific to electronic message centers. Um, one of the things I, I want to uh, mention, I sent all of you uh, emails earlier. The one study that has been mentioned uh, by staff is actually not an independent study. It is an internal study by an anti-sign organization. If you'll just study their, um, oh goodness, what they stand for, they, they say right in it that... Uh, they're, they're literally anti-billboards. Their main thing is billboard message centers, and they're anti-billboard message centers. Um, but that's the only study that's out there. I have plenty of studies, and there's many more than what I sent over to you guys today. But you have to ask yourself, if AAA thought that message centers were a distraction and causing accidents, do you not think that they would be standing up against them? And they're not. It's not even on their list of distractions. There are two other studies I sent you that have the top 10 distractions. Signs are not even on that list. So the fact that we're using that argument to um, take these signs and either make them dark at 11 o'clock or restrict their animations, I would ask this question. Um, is there anybody that's really opposed to any of the animations that are out there? I mean, have you seen any that are offensive to you? Because I'll almost promise you that if you went to that business and said, that particular animation offends me, I would be willing to bet they would turn that off. I would be willing to bet money they would turn that off. I can tell you that I've been in Helena for 22 years. We have had some message center issues in the past. Uh, and the sign industry as a whole are the ones that police that. In fact, I remember uh, there's a place right there on Cedar Street, and they put up this big message center that they didn't dim down at night at all. And uh, it was the mother load. And they wouldn't dim it, and they wouldn't dim it. I know myself and at least four other sign people went over there. We finally got them to dim that thing down so that it wasn't offending people. Because we know that if we 
let them offend people. It's going to be offensive, and we're going to be doing something about it like we are right now. Two other things I'd like to address just briefly, and I don't want to be hard on staff. I really have enjoyed working with Michael as much as I can because he's really done a, a pretty good job. I do think he brings some bias to the table, and uh, I think that's um, been somewhat evident lately. Um, you want to start I can wrapping you, up? I'm sir. sorry? You want to start wrapping up? Okay. But I will tell you that um, we did, the, the sign industry and staff attempted this about eight, ten years ago when um, Elroy was still here. And we spent months and months and months coming up with a revised sign code that everybody um, could agree on. And um, it got to the commission at that point, and the commission said, if it doesn't ban the message centers, we're not going to take it up. And so it got tabled until this happened um, 18 months ago. So with that, I just would say, please, let's keep the animations, and uh, let's forget that 300 foot. That 100 foot has worked just fine. There's nobody complaining about it being in their bedroom or lighting up their lights. If there are, I'd certainly like to hear from them, because if there is any that are causing that issue, we can get them to do something about it. But to do it citywide, and then the very last comment is, I heard a comment about the other cities in Montana and that we should maybe follow their lead. Why? Why shouldn't we be the leaders? Why shouldn't we be the ones that say, hey, we're friendly to business. Come on to Helena. We need you here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, um, my name is Glenn Middlestead. Um, I'm the managing member of GM Properties. Um, first thing I had my notes here, but it jumped out what uh, Commissioner Logan said was, I think we're just dealing with another layer of bureaucracy. That that's, couldn't have said it better. Uh, so I just wanted to start with that. Um, our company currently owns 15 commercial properties representing 30 plus businesses here in Helena. Um, at last count, we pay in the six-figure range in property taxes. One way we help to pay these taxes is offering our tenants A-plus signage. Over the past several years, we've invested almost $100,000 in new signage uh, on our different properties. They're able to pay a higher rent through the higher gross e revenue that's created from this professional advertising. If you've ever owned any form of business, it's all about advertising, whether it's on the street, social media, et cetera. And today's world runs at a 24 seven pace. It's not the eight to five uh, kind of situation that it was back in the old days. Um, I think any other fees, I mean, we pay fees to, for our business licenses, we pay our property tax fees, we pay fees, we put, get building permits to do these signs any other fees in addition to it, I just think it's another layer of bureaucracy. Um, I recommend option two on both counts. I don't know how it's specifically read, but the option two of keeping what and eliminating what is what I would recommend. Um, like I said, we already have plenty of fees molded into our, our taxes and other things, and any more fees is, is just another layer of bureaucracy. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, good evening. Good Thank evening. you for your patience. Uh, my name is Rebecca Harbage. Um, I live at 914 Dearborn here in Helena. I'm also the chair of the City Zoning Commission. Um, I support the adoption of this code as proposed. This was a well thought out proposal that went through close scrutiny as we've heard already, many months of consideration, many iterations before landing on your desks. I truly do thank the sign industry folks, local business owners, members of the community who engaged with us and submitted comments throughout this process. Their input resulted in taking this to a much better, more balanced 
um, proposal that you have before you tonight. You've heard from me previously um, a couple months ago, so I won't take up too much of your time, but I did want to address two of the points that have been discussed tonight. Um, first, I just wanted to point out um, a reflection on option two for 11236H. That includes requirements based on whether a sign can be seen from a residential district. I believe that standard has two potential faults. First, you do not have to see a sign in order to be affected by light from that sign. Um, light, especially changing light, and as a reminder, this applies to the electronic message centers that can change every two seconds according to this new code. That light can be very impactful even if it is reflected or ambient around your home. Second, I do think there may be challenges for staff in implementing the site standard. Um, this requires that the staff will have to determine whether that sign can in fact be seen from the residential district. So are they going to be going around throughout the district to see if they can see the proposed sign? Uh, related to the structuring of the billboard permitting and fees, the cap and replace program is meaningful. Um, I do believe that has merit regardless of any fee structure that's being proposed, and I don't want to see that piece lost. Um, I appreciate hearing a similar sentiment from Mr. Strobel earlier tonight. Uh, that said, the Zoning Commission did discuss various options. Ultimately, we are not the experts on structuring of city finances, so we, in essence, defer to your expertise and the expertise of staff to figure out how to manage and administer that program. We're fortunate to live in a beautiful city. I am wrapping up. Thank you for your um, contributions to this city. Zoning, and within it, regulation of signs, seeks to ensure that we are forward-looking um, and we establish appropriate controls today that allow us to manage the growth, balance the growth that we will inevitably see in the next few years. It's about taking the lead. Um, it's not about leaving it up to individual residents to complain when they have a problem. It's not about leaving it up to individual sign owners to fix problems that they may not be aware of. I appreciate your diligence. You've had great questions. I think um, Planner Alvarez and Director Brink have answered them, um, but I'm available if you have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Wiley Rucker. I own a couple Good of evening. furniture stores here in town. My family's been in business here for over 60 years. We've seen a lot of changes through the years. I think probably one of the biggest frustrations is dealing with cities, you know, just things just get changed way too often. You know, we, I put a sign in three and a half years ago. At that time, we paid for permits. I paid for all of these things. I thought that was going to take care of everything. Now I'm finding out that I may have to replace all of my messages. I've, I've got a bank of 60 ads, 60 different displays I put up there. Nothing's belligerent, nothing is flashy. I tried to keep it as mellow as I can, and I'm very, I'm very attentive to, to how I put them up there in the order that I put them up there, so they're not obnoxious. And to replace that bank of ads, it's gonna cost me 4,000 bucks. Well, are you guys gonna pay for that? Probably not. I'm gonna end up having to fork out another $4,000 to pay for them. It's just, you have to look at what it's cost in businesses. You know, there's a lot of people that aren't here tonight. There are a lot of people in Helena that don't even know this is going on. I said to one of the, said something to one of the businesses, probably one of the bigger signs in town about this a month ago. They didn't know a thing about it. So you may advertise it in the way you guys advertise things, but for a lot of us, we don't have time to look for that stuff. So just keep that in consideration. You know, as far as, you know, toning down signs and all that stuff, you know, my sign also works as a nightlight, like somebody else mentioned. I'm gonna, if, if I have to, my sign goes dark at night, I'm gonna have to put up lights for my parking lot because I have a pot shop next door at one of them and you can't believe the traffic goes in and out of there at night. I don't know what they're trying to do, but they break my chains. I mean, they do all sorts of stuff. So anyway, thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Um, my name is Ali Carley, and I'm with Lamar Advertising. Um, Mr. Mayor, City Commission, Michael, City Staff, the Zoning Commission, again, I'm going to reiterate a thank you for all the time and consideration that has been put into this. We do appreciate it. I know it hasn't been an easy process. 
Um, as Bob and Kelly have reiterated tonight, we oppose the annual billboard permit fee. Um, and I'm just gonna reiterate, you know, as mentioned, no other city in any surrounding state does this. Um, Michael made a note tonight about this is not a practice in Montana or other Montana cities, and that really stuck with me. I know it wasn't pertaining to the billboard permit fee, but it was pertaining to signs in general. So I just wanted to bring that up and reiterate that these signs have already been permitted. We filled out a permit when we built these signs. It may have been many moons ago, but we did fill that out. So they would be grandfathered in at this point, um, is how we would read, read this or prefer to read this. Um, and we have sent, as Michael mentioned, um, you know, Yesco and Lamar probably has 90% of the billboards that would be affected by this. Um, we have sent the city a map of all of our billboard locations, which includes the latitude and longitude of our billboards, as well as a photo of the billboards, um, an address that we have listed on the billboards. It has the size. It has a lot of information on that. And we're happy to provide it again, and we can provide it in an Excel format to make things easier if they are, if it's needed and it is helpful. So I just wanted to reiterate that we oppose section 112311-C, and we understand that if that could be omitted and everything goes through, if that's what's holding it up, we would um, appreciate that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission. My name is Alyssa Sorensen, and I live at 643 Dearborn Avenue. I am also a current member of the Zoning Commission. I would like to address and provide some additional context for the three areas that have been identified for questions and potential changes. Um, over the last year and a half, we've spent a great deal of time hearing from members of the public, stakeholders, uh, individually doing external research on signed best practices, and discussing community needs with our friends and neighbors. Um, I think the industry folks have done a, a, been able to continue to um, represent their view, but I do worry that some of the additional feedback and information that we have received or considered is being lost. Uh, first, I'd like to address the message board questions relating to having some turned off at night and limiting the use of animation. Um, these signs currently are able to show full-blown commercials and other flash anima animations specifically intended to keep the intention of the reader for a long period of time. Uh, whereas one cognizant uh, owner or a sign here or there may not be particularly effective, the overall visual clutter grows as these signs become more common and popular. Um, personally, I've also found it to be difficult to even read some of these signs, and I think it could be more effective to have a static message displaying what is going on at these businesses so I can read them. Um, back to more of the uh, Zoning Commission point of view here. Um, we have in fact read independent studies, or I have in my decision making as part of this uh, commission, specifically on the effect of visual clutter on drivers that find it decreases the ability of people to react to unexpected situations to the overall visual stimulation. We are also one of very few municipalities in Montana that does not have a restriction at all currently on this animated signage, and there's a reason why communities have chosen to go this route. Um, the changes we propose in this area are based on this desire to decrease and limit the visual clutter that's growing with the use of expanded signs. We also looked to um, decrease and limit light pollution uh, based on Dark Sky International concerns that we've read about electronic message boards effect on wildlife and human health, um, and also feedback from folks about their dislike for bright signs. They recommend uh, limiting brightness and turning off lights um, between 11 p.m. and one hour before dawn. I do wanna specify that this update does not require a business owner to turn off after they're closed if they close prior to 11 p.m. I did wanna make sure that was clear. Um, I think the billboard situation has been addressed pretty well. Um, the cap and trade is important. We spent a lot of time on it. It's a far away from where we were and much more permissive for the sign owners. Um, but we do think uh, their city staff determined they need to have an annual permitting process for billboards to meet their needs and administer this program fairly and effectively. And we follow their lead on that and trust them to make these decisions for their budget. So with that, please uh, take our long and uh, deep look into the subject matter into consideration, please, when you make your decision. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have any online? 
Mr. Mayor, at this time I have two hands raised. Uh, first in the queue is Jeff Young. You have to floor, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. My name is Jeff Young, representing Young Electric Sign Company. We celebrated our 100th year a couple of years ago. Um, members of the City Commission, Mayor Collins, thank you, and Mr. Alvarez and the Zoning Commission for all the work they did. Our industries, both outdoor and on-premise industries, self-imposed brightness standards for electronic signs. That is only 0.3 foot candles above ambient lights. Ambient light meaning the light level in the immediate area. The reduction of this brightness goes most of the way in resolving concerns that citizens have in hundreds of communities across the, the, the country. When we start talking about signs, we seem to forget that signs are maybe top five, but headlights on cars are six, three, four, five, six times brighter than these electronic signs. Tail lights would be number two, traffic signals number three, and area lighting creates much more light than electronic signs do. So I'd urge you and ask you as you drive around town to not only see that the headlights are bright, but they're moving. And our brain does a wonderful job of being able to manage light and motion in our cars. I agree with what was stated before. A dark city is creepy and it's simply not safe. I drove this city overnight. I did 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. I would say about 60% of the signs are lit all night long. We also, in terms of value, any of, any of the businesses in the, in the room know that you're paying for impressions online and you're used to paying about $17 per 1,000 impressions. And by turning signs off at night, and limiting their use, there's real economic damage that happens with that. In terms of the annual fee for billboards, you want to cap and the number of billboards in town. We understand, we're agreeing to that but please don't add a punitive fee structure on top of that. It feels like a we don't like you fee. And uh, again, at the end of my comments here, I wanna thank everyone for all the time and energy they've put, put in, particularly Michael Alvarez and the members of the Zoning Commission. You've been very polite and exhaustively patient as we've gone back and forth on all these points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you let the second person in? Next in the queue, I have James Carpentier. You have the floor, James. Yeah, hi, thank you. James Carpentier here on behalf of the Northwest Sign Council. And I just have to uh, also commend the commission and Mr. Alvarez for a job uh, that is very difficult and challenging and they've really done a fantastic job, I think for one of the more complex regulations that they can deal with. But I just wanted to recommend and talk about some different things that you've already heard about, because you've heard about section 11-23-6H in relation to the moratorium from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I think the, the most important part of this is that it's really not needed. And why is it not needed? Because the existing standard that you have in the city is 1,350 nits, the equivalent of the three-tenths foot candle in relation to the 1,350 nits is 323 nits. So the standard for illumination for the, that's proposed is gonna be just a fraction of what you currently have. So you would have a number of existing signs under the existing code that would in fact be too bright. Under the existing code, they won't be too bright. So really there's no reason to have that. And I think there's a lot of considerations in addition to what's been talked about, safety for sure, after our deliveries, and uh, th there's usually activities that go beyond the actual business hours of a business. So I think, and even um, the, the safety folks at times, I think might also need a, a sign to be able to get around. So there's a lot of reasons to keep those signs lit, and I think it should be at the option of the owner versus uh, regulated or mandated by the city, especially when, it's not really gonna be a problem at all with the existing proposed standards. It'll be a fraction of the brightness that you currently see, which I know has been a problem in the community and a concern by a, a number of people that live there and justifiably so. So with that, I, uh, that I really appreciate the opportunity to speak, Mayor Collins and commissioners, and any, happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, it appears I have no other public comment online. Thank you. Commissioners, Mr. Mayor, final comments. <clears throat> Uh, if I may, so um, I think one thing's evident here tonight is uh, this really has been a, a very good example of collaboration between an industry and a municipality and the community, um, uh, the m members of the public. Uh, I, think, I think we've all heard uh, of Mr. Alvarez and Director Brink's uh, work and the zoning commission's work on this to get us to this point that we're at tonight. We have <clears throat> a motion that's recommended in our packet here, which I'm prepared to make with amendments that address each of the three uh, areas that we've really focused on tonight. And I, I guess I would look to my colleagues and perhaps the parliamentarian uh, I'd be happy to make the motion and then separately consider each of the, men, the amendments. I don't want to wrap them all up into one lest they get sort of confused and people feel conflicted about how they should vote on a given matter or not, if, that's, if that sounds okay. I will defer to Attorney Hockelock. What's the process here? Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Logan, certainly you can make a general motion and then um, prior to voting on that motion, consider kind of amendments um, within that. So you'd make the generalized motion presumably to pass something, um, some version of the ordinance, and then you could propose individual amendments one by one, each with individual yes, no votes. Okay, and these are very straightforward amendments just so everybody knows. So, uh, Was that? They're very straightforward amendments. I don't think they'll take a lot of... Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And for Attorney Hockeluk, if there is a consideration of an amendment to an amendment, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> um, would it be just because it's going to get confusing for us, I suspect, if the amendment is, motion is made, would then a second motion to amend the, the amendment, amendment need to happen? Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Reed, yes, that would need to happen. Do you intend amending the amendment? Go ahead. All right, well, let's see what happens. Um, so with that, and, and I guess, again, prefacing making this motion, thank, I'd like to thank everyone for the work on it. Um, I think everyone also agrees that the bulk of this uh, proposed ordinance change is a needed is a needed thing and and so um, we don't want that to be sunk I see, um, yeah, I see. I see commissioner yeah go ahead okay finish um, so with that I would move to approve an ordinance revising the regulation of signs by amending chapter 23 title 11 of the Helena City Code by repealing and replacing chapter 23 general sign regulation regulations in its entirety and adopting this new chapter 23 sign regulations in lieu thereof with the condition that the area of allowable wall signage in section 11 23 9 be changed from 8 to 15 percent the further condition that section 11 23 6 h be amended to read any on-premise electronic message center that is located within 300 feet of any residential zoning district must automatically turn off between the hours of eight, or excuse me, 11 and 6 a.m. daily, and the further condition that section 1123-7E be amended to read a non-conforming on-premise sign shall cease to be used when the business activity. Uh, Second. Thank you. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to start with an amendment on uh, section 11 and 11236J. I would recommend I would make an amendment to strike that language. 
And I'll read that language. Yeah, one minute. Okay. Um, Commissioner Dean, is there something you want to add on before we move forward? Yeah, thanks, Ms. Mary. Yep, just briefly, um, not on the amendments, but on the motion that was just uh, moved and seconded. Um, I just want to briefly go on record that I think that as this motion currently stands, it strikes a balance um, and a compromise between enhancing the beauty and aesthetics of our community while also allowing businesses to advertise. Um, and it also ensures that we are remaining compliant with our dark skies ordinance that we passed well over a decade ago. Um, and I think that the ordinance as it's proposed with the compromises that exist is sufficient. Um, obviously we'll go through these amendments, but I, I truly believe that this is a compromise um, that would work for our community. Um, and I, I stand by the zoning commission's um, sentiments that that it is a, a piece of common ground um, that would move us uh, forward. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Please continue. Okay, so Mr. Mayor, I just for the public uh, to understand what section or 11236 section J is about, it reads, no portion of any sign may change it, its message or background in a manner or by a method of display characterized by motion or animation, including the presentation of pictorials or graphics displayed in a progression of frames that give the illusion of motion or the illusion of moving objects, moving patterns, bands of light, or expanding or contracting shapes, except as provided by 11-23-6 section D. My, my amendment, I am moving to amend the language of the proposed ordinance change to strike that language, which would be section J of 11-23-6. You say you have three, right? Yes, oh, so, I, so if we, I, I would say let's consider this okay. and then it stands or falls and then maybe drive on to the next one. And Mr. Mayor, um, if I may. Yes, please. Uh, that would, what Commissioner Logan has suggested is the proper way to proceed in dealing with one of these amendment motions at a time. So let's start with the first one then. Okay, so do we have any final discussion on the first amendment according to Commissioner Logan? Which has not been seconded. It was seconded? No. Oh, it wasn't? No. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. So, for the purposes of a discussion, I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. So, Mr. First. Mayor, just a brief rationale of my um, putting this amendment forward. I just think that uh, I've heard and we've heard it here ten, tonight to a degree that, that those with electronic messaging centers find a, a good deal of utility and usefulness in animations. And um, so I think I, I, that's why I'm recommending um, this amendment. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you. I am not going to support this amendment. Um, I, I, have, I have listened really carefully listened to both sides. These have been difficult decisions to make. Um, at the end of the day, I do think the 18 month process and the compromises we reached are, are good. Um, and I do think the exception in section G um, is, you know, clearly it was well thought out, clearly it was well discussed. So I will not support the amendment to remove this section. Thanks. Do we have any other comments? It's been moved and seconded, Adam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtliff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. No. Commissioner Dean. No. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries three to two. So, Mr. Mayor, the second uh, amendment that I would um, like to make is to amend the language of the proposed ordinance change in 11-23-6 section eight to read no on, this is, and, and if you think back to uh, our administrative meeting 
This is what we referred to as option two on Wednesday. And it reads, no on-premise electronic message center shall be erected or maintained closer than 100 feet from any residential district unless the sign is constructed in such a manner that the sign cannot be seen from said district. And just briefly, the rationale for that is, um, again, we heard a lot from the sign community about the restriction of, of time and distance. And so um, this is one of the sign community's proposed uh, language changes that would really uh, mesh the old and the new, the existing ordinance and, um, and the proposed ordinance change. So um, that's my motion. Was there a second? Oh, Commissioner Dane, you have your hand up. You have the floor. You're muted. Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I will not be supporting this. I think that um, option one provides a very reasonable accommodation um, where they can remain on from until 11 p.m. and back on at 6.01 a.m. unless the business is open. So if it is a business that's open throughout the night, this sign remains on. I don't think that 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. is, is unreasonable. Um, in our community and and will only further enhance the the quality of, of our night sky and and the aesthetics of our, our community. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, one minute, one minute. Commissioner Logan, would you repeat your amendment, please? Certainly. Um, so I move to amend the language of the proposed ordinance change in 11-23-6 H to read no on-premise electronic message, message center shall be erected or maintained closer than 100 feet from any residential district unless the sign is constructed in such a manner that the sign cannot be seen from said district. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion, Commissioner? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will not be supporting this amendment. Um, similar reasons to the last one. I think a thoughtful process was undertaken. Um, I think these are hard decisions. Um, and I am sensitive to the uh, specific comment from uh, the chairperson of the Zoning Commission about the site measurement and how it is, you know, it's a really challenging one to use. I don't know how enforceable it is. I think that puts a, a pretty heavy burden on our staff as far as implementing the, the site distance um, requirement. So I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Any other final comments on this amendment? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtless. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. No. Commissioner Dean. No. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries three to two. And Mr. Mayor, if I made the last um, amendment that I'd like to make to the proposed ordinance change would be to amend the language of the proposed ordinance change to strike 11-23-11C, which requires a bill, billboard business permit. And that, so that'd be the entirety of section C. Mr. Mayor, could I ask a procedural question? Please. Uh, thank you, and I know you explained this to me, but I, I don't want to get lost in the weeds again. So if I have a minor amendment to his amendment, do we wait for this to pass or fail, and then I propose the amendment separately, or do I propose it within this discussion? I think you should propose it in a discussion, go on a year right. whether. Well, in that case, Mr. Mayor um, and fellow commissioners, my proposal would be to um, strike only section four of part C. I am on board with the cap and replace program. I think it makes sense. I think we need an inventory. The fee amount does not seem significant in terms of cost recovery for staff. And I appreciate there is staff time. I hear that, uh, but it does seem that the renewal fee is a burden. Um, and if we are able to come up with a system of simply registering, issuing an annual permit, uh, saying you're permitted. I think we achieved the same goal of the cap and replace program, which again, I, I, I see value there. 
it's the cost piece that to me seems um, like a piece we could remove. So I would propose leaving everything and striking only section four, noting that in section eight, there is a failure to renew the permit, which does come with a fine, which would help with the enforcement. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Oh, excuse no, me. No, no, go ahead. I guess it remains to be seconded, sorry. Second. So now, no, wait, wait, bec because we have two am amendments going on, what's the protocol? Mayor, commissioners, it, it, it would require a second, and if there is no second, it would fail. The, Which? The, the amendment to the amendment would fail if there is no okay, second, gotcha. and then the previous amendment would still stand, and you'd have to deal with that one separately as well. So gotcha. Commissioner Reed's amendment will be dealt with as the, um, you know, excluding section four, deal with that one, and then you'll still have the leftover, the very original one um, for excluding all of section C. I got that loud and clear. So, so it, seems, it seems it's been seconded, so we discuss, vote on Commissioner Reed's amendment. Um, one minute, one minute. Who seconded it? You seconded. Okay, I have Commissioner Dean on the line. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I think I'm hearing two different things here. One, I'm hearing in opposition to the policy of a cap and replace program. Um, I think that coming from Commissioner Logan's amendment on the on the second piece, I'm hearing in opposition to the fee structure from Commissioner Reed. And so I, I guess I would like to hear um, is is the problem here that we're asking um, the general taxpayer should should we strike should we strike this fee and rem leave the cap and replace program? Um, is there concern about asking the general taxpayer to fund a cap and replace program that's meant to uh, create um, a system for a specific industry, or is the opposition to simply a cap and replace program? Mr. Mayor, if I might. I, again, I, I firmly believe a cap and replace program makes sense. I, I see value there. I think the amount being requested is not meaningful to the general fund um, cost recovery piece. Um, already, you know, the general fund is already covering all the costs of the staff time for this program. So I don't think the fee is meaningful. I do think it is burdensome um, to the, the sign owners or registrants. Um, and so since that, that fee just feels like a bureaucratic hassle, um, it, it, the value of that fee does not feel meaningful to me. So I support the program. Um, I believe it should be there, but I would strike that one section. Uh, but I would not support an amendment to remove uh, the section entirely. Thanks. Okay. It's been moved and seconded on Commissioner Reed's amendment. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Shirtlift. Aye. Commissioner Logan. No. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Dean. No. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries three to two, and that is for clarification, the Reed Amendment to Commissioner Logan's amendment. Oh, we got yours, huh? And finally, has it been seconded? I think it was. By? I second it. <laughs> you, you just, you're just going around seconding. <laughs> 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 okay, Commissioner Logan's amendment has been seconded. Any final discussion? I see your hands up. Your hands up, um, Commissioner Dean. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. So I, I think I know where this is going. Um, and where so one thing that I would ask is I, I heard that there would be potential interest in a um, moratorium discussion. Um, should this amendment pass, is that something that staff could start looking into to incorporate in a um, amendment of this ordinance? Thank you. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. 
Mayor, commissioners, I just want to make sure that you know what you're voting on. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps it would be useful to have Commissioner Logan repeat his um, amendment everything. That, as amended because it has now been amended. Right. Commissioner Logan. So it's, well, it seems like this sort of undoes um, my amendment, really. So um, is, is, I guess, a, a question perhaps for someone on staff, does not Section D take care of the cap and replace program with the exception of the funding? Okay, Mr. Brink. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. So the question was, if I'm clear, Section D? In, in 11, 23, 11, Section D, the, the section immediately following the one I'm recommending be stricken. Right, and, and that reads, no new off-premise billboard signage pending removal of non-conforming Signs that's the cap and replace uh, that says no new billboards new billboards prohibited But then there are replacement provisions in that section as well So we cap them, but we do allow them to be replaced, right? so and that was my recommendation in the amendment was really to strike section C the billboard business permit Right. And its process and the fees associated with it. Right. Not the cap and replace program. Well, then, I, I believe it's the same then. But with Commissioner Reed's successful <laughs> amendment to my amendment, <laughs> which was the striking of Section 4, um, I'm not sure how my amendment drives on, honestly. I mean, it seems like it sort of negates it or nullifies it. I'm not entirely yes, certain. Mr. Can Mayor, Commissioner Logan, that's what I took the amendment to do as well. Yeah. Mayor, Commissioners, I wonder if I may, what I heard from Commissioner Reed is, and this may be clarified perhaps, is that the amendment intended to just take the fee out but leave the structure of the permitting in place. Right. And so with her amendment, that's where it stands, but you still had an amendment on the books to exclude the entirety of section C, which then would rid of, would if passed, would get rid of the entirety of section C. The requirement in uh, parliamentary rules is that you take every motion that's most recent first. So yours is not subsumed. It didn't affect it. It just took out section four. And now you have to consider the next amendment was to take out further all of section C. But the way it stands right now as Commissioner Logan Amend, or I'm sorry, as Commissioner Reed's amendment stands, the way it stands and somebody might not vote for the exclusion of all of Section C because what remains is a permitting system that costs nothing to the billboard owners. Mm -hmm. But still, but it still keeps track of and requires they register every year and all the requirements of A, I'm sorry, C1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and on are all still there. The only thing it removes is the cost to the billboard owners. Is that correct as you yes. intended yeah. it? So we okay. still have the, I referred to it whether this was fair or not, we still have the layer of bureaucracy added of an annual application for a permit that costs nothing. Mayor, Commissioner Logan, you still have all the requirements of Section C minus the, the, okay. co the annual 
renewal fee subject to periodic adjustments by city commission. That think, would be excluded. I think that, I think I got it. Ugh. It was moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, send us home. <laughs> My pleasure. Commissioner Shirtliff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. No. Commissioner Dean. No. Why do you always do this? <laughs> Why do I have to break this tie? Mayor Collins. I don't know. Mayor Collins. I got a question. So if I were to vote with Commissioner Logan, what happens to the First Amendment? The com mayor, commissioners, the First Amendment, if you're referring to, to Commissioner Reed's mm -hmm. amendment, that one would no longer be in effect oh, because you wouldn't have a section C at all. There would be no need for the, uh, there would be no, it's, it's hard to explain. I understand why you're asking the question. Um, basically it would exclude all of section C and leave no permitting requirement at all for billboard owners. What's the requirement now? You mean as in currently? As currently, Blen Avarice, what is it right now? Thank you, Mayor and Commission. There is no current um, requirement for a, a billboard business permit in the city. Mayor, commissioners, may I? No, uh, I think what I what I meant. I'm sorry. One minute. What I meant to ask was, um, do we have all Section C as of now? Thank you, Mayor and Commission. No, uh, Section C is introduced with this ordinance. Attorney Doctor. Mayor, commissioners, yes, I missed. No, I, I <laughs> there was you a question. To say something. Oh, uh, Mayor, commissioners, I think uh, Director Brink had some clarification through. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, commission. I apologize. We will get through this. Patience. Uh, so, Section C is integral with the cap and replace program. <clears throat> Without that, the, the whole section with billboards just wouldn't work. Um, meaning then it just becomes a cap program where no new billboards or replacements were permitted in the city. So that's what the section would essentially become. Because the BP, BPP is, is threaded through the whole billboard section. Um, so just strike in section C, it does um, alter the rest of the, the section which is fine, and we'll go back and fix it, but I think tonight um, it's, it's, it, it, it breaks the rest of the ordinance, <clears throat> if that's a, a legal term. God damn, I'd rather resign. Thank you, uh, Director Brink. Mr. Mayor? Yes. We're just waiting for me. Well, yeah. Um, so we're voting on my amendment. Right. How, how, how does the vote shake out? For my it's 2-2. Two, two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I might. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, uh, currently we are voting on the original amendment, third amendment by Commissioner Logan regarding Section C. It was seconded by Commissioner Shirtliff. 
We currently stand with Commissioner Shirtliff and Logan voting in favor. Commissioners Reed and Dean as no. I see you're having fun with this stuff. No. So the final vote uh, on Commissioner Logan's original amendment three uh, fails three to two. So what would you, Mr. Mr. Mayor? So, so I, I think what just happened was C stays in. Right. So the, the billboard permitting process stays in. No, no cost. No cost. I think that's what just happened. Yes. So I hope everybody got something. <laughs> okay. At this time, is there anyone from the public wishes to address the commission? Madam Clerk, do you have any online? Uh, Mr. Mayor, before we proceed, I would ask for clarification from the parliamentarian. Do we need to do a final vote on the original motion? Okay. <laughs> Mayor, commissioners, thank you. City clerk, you do the final or the very original motion that it has not been addressed yet as amended. Okay. The original motion. I'll entertain a motion. I mean, the original Madam Yes. Uh, do so. we need to say, do we need to reread it as amended or no? Mayor, Commissioner Reed, I think that's ideal, if okay. you would. So, Mr. Mayor, if, if I may. Go ahead. I move to approve an ordinance revising the regulation of signs by amending Chapter 23, Title 11 of the Helena City Code by repealing and replacing Chapter 23, General Sign Regulations, <clears throat> excuse me, in its entirety and adopting this new Chapter 23 sign regulations in lieu thereof with the condition that the area of allowable wall signage in section 11.23.9 be changed from 8% to 15%. The further condition that section 11.23.6H be amended to read any on-premise electronic message centers that is located within 300 feet of any residential zoning district must automatically turn off between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. daily. And the further condition that section 11.23.7E be amended to read, a non-conforming on-premise sign shall cease to be used when the business activity uh, as amended. Let's move and second it. Madam Clerk. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Shirtliff. Oh. Commissioner Shirtliff. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Commissioner Reed. Uh, yep. um, I'm sorry, my brain has exploded here. So if I am not supportive of some of the amendments included therein, this is as amended. So my vote is no. Commissioner Dean. No. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries three to two. Okay. Madam Hakala, are we done with this topic? Mayor and Commission, we are. <laughs> okay. Now, is there anyone from the public wishes to address this commission? Madam Clerk, any online? Mr. Mayor, I have no public comment online. Any final comments from the commission? I would say that this vote has been totally confusing for me and tasking. Without further ado, this meeting is adjourned.